Right, I'm here. I'm getting there. Right. So I, I'm 100% perfect, yeah. Well, shall we, shall we, shall we carry on doing and keep talking about yeah, it? And yeah. then you can... I'm Ray Skinner. Um, I've been rector here in Morden for the best part of 20 years. St Helier inner Londoners moving out in large numbers to the, the council estate. A garden city uh, as it was planned, moving out to the country where there was so much more space and people were able to really enjoy that. Lots of activities that people probably wanted to do in the city but they couldn't. But of course it was a pretty monochrome community from the East End largely and some of the old people around still trace their roots right back. Hello, I'm Nitin Pandit. I've been living and working on this parade in Green Lane Warden, St Helier Estate for approximately 22 years. There used to be a pharmacy and a chemist right at the other end of the uh, parade. The change in the parade, what has happened, is that the traditional changes, like the post office has now gone from this parade, the pharmacy has gone. I do understand just before I arrived on this parade that there was a bakery on this parade. Good afternoon, uh, my name is Gam Gurum and uh, I live in Trida Sanctuary, Green Lane Morden. And uh, I'm the first Gurkha to get the Hague home. This is a very, very secure compound area like army camp and you got a wide open so your children can go cycling, kick around the scooter, kick around the ball and you can explore the uh, open space. Hi, uh, my name is John Bovingdon. I'm a neighbourhood warden for St Helier. There is a sense of community here. Um, what I have noticed though is that over the years it has sort of weakened in a way but there is, um, there is still some bondship here. A more recent involvement uh, by many church members in the local community has been through something called Friends in St Helier, a very important caring uh, agency, two days a week, lunch clubs, but uh, around that a great many other ways of just caring for largely older people. I've got a wonderful neighbour. She's 88 and health. She comes in every morning and sees I'm all right. She gets me bits of shopping a couple of doors away. Now she, she often comes and knocks and sees I'm all right. And she cooks the chicken when she cooks. She always brings me a bowl of chicken soup in. Oh, bless. Yeah, I don't really want it, but I have to eat. I have to make it do two days. <laughs> families first moved down here, it was said we come from the slums. So we were treated as more or less second rate, like a lot of people can be from whatever nation they come from. But I do find here, around us, if you talk to people and say hello, whatever, we have got lovely neighbours, lady next door, she cook us food, across the road, it's amazing really. And Dorothy next door, well, this is fantastic. My name is Bridget Parker and I've lived here on the St Helier Estate for 45 years. It used to be, when it was first built, the best estate in the whole of the south of England. The gardens used to be lovely to be able to walk around the estate and see the colour and that is missing at the moment. The gardens on the estate are the biggest change. My name is Elspeth and I live in Morden and I've lived here since 1981. And some of the houses I see have been let go and you think, oh for heaven's sake, you know, tidy up, pick up your litter, put the bags out for the dustman. Um, you think people could make a bit more of an effort to make the fronts of their house at least look nice so that we don't feel as though we're living on a slum state, which you sometimes do. You look at some of the, the fronts of houses and it doesn't take a great effort just to tidy up and put a pot out with a couple of flowers and just make the neighbourhood look nicer and if the neighbourhood looks nicer, you feel better. We weren't all perfect. Let's go have a rose or park and nick a few apples and this, that and the other. 
Oh, now the thing is to go up um, round the back of the shops at Rose Hill looking for empty boxes to sell firewood. And then we'd find not so many empty boxes, but peaches and all that. But we enjoyed them up on the grass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we used to just hang around here, um, like we used to just drink and everything else. And we used to just try and wind up as many people as we can. But now there's a police station over there. We can't get away with it anymore. <laughs> I'm Richard Anderson. I'm uh, currently the uh, Safe Neighbourhood Sergeant covering the St Helier area. We will provide a high visibility patrolling um, on the on the area. The Green Lane shops opposite. Um, there's been occasion where they they've had problems within the shop and they've come straight over, and we've been able to go with them and uh, and try and sort their needs and problems out. The problems that we always encountered was shoplifting, smoking, drinking, and all associated problems with that. Now. It makes me wonder, why are the children out on the streets, perhaps at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock at night? It's just when you come across groups of young people hanging around, not really doing anything useful, a bit loud, maybe they've been drinking, you don't know. I try to you know, give them a wide berth and uh, move away quickly, but chances are they're probably just standing around chatting, so, you know. There's an age um, gap here with the community, so you've got um, a lot of elderly residents and you've got a lot of young residents as well, and it's um, crossing that gap. Um, the perception may be that there's lots of youths causing antisocial behaviour all over the place, which really isn't, quite, uh, really isn't the case. Um, there's just the usual suspects, the, the, the lost few who uh, just need some direction in life and that's what I try and provide for them. I would love to see a few youth clubs around here, so then we've got something to do instead of just sitting on straight corners and like having a lot, try and have a laugh that way. But like sometimes it can actually escalate to like other stuff like, like fights and all that, like too many people on one street at a time. So if there's youth clubs open like five days a week or something, or weekends, then it'd break them up. Down our road, a group of teenagers, like at night, they threw bricks at the back of our garage and tried to nick my dad's scooter. I think it's absolutely mad in our community because there's this big space that practically doesn't get used and they don't allow ball games that will make good use of the space. There's so much space there and we have to come up with a game in the tunnel. My name is Sophia Salam. Within the mosque, my role is that of social interaction and welfare within the community. We've come a long way. I think people were a bit apprehensive in the beginning, as it would be to have a big building like this and, and a big community to suddenly come and, and make use of the area. But I think over the years, we've, they've realized that we are very peaceful and that we do have a lot to offer. It's the most beautiful building, absolutely glorious. Um, we've been to a couple of formal dinners there and I have asked questions like there's no tomorrow because I know nothing about Islam, Muslim religion and I just asked and asked and asked questions and they didn't mind at all, they kept ask, answering them. Children are given a buddy when they first arrive so other children are encouraged to be sensitive to the needs of new children and be supportive as much as possible. A child has to feel welcome and comfortable and stable in their new environment in order for them to progress academically and in other ways. The basic idea is to get children to a point where they can work independently in class. The, the language is developed to a point where they don't need extra support anymore. I guess what makes a good community, and this is what I see as well on a on a ground level, is um, crossing those barriers. And we all have those individual barriers, whether it's culture, what whatever prevents us um, from talking to our neighbours. Um, as long as we cross over those barriers, um, that's what really sort of brings everyone together. I believe a community is a group of people that live in a certain area that just get along with each other and sort of welcome a newcomer with like, welcome, uh, like open arms. A community is a force of like, those people living in the same area and they can just like, overcome any class that just comes their way. Thank you.